Hey everybody, welcome to the Say Report. I am Seaton Zerowick, and joining me today is, of course, my my c- compadre. Oh man, I was trying really hard not to say co-host, but I already had the C in there. That's good, that compadre, <laughs> like you really my... saved it. And joining <laughs> me today is Devin Decker, as always. You're just going to say my name, I don't have a title. No, i got to find a title for you. Something, right, will, fine. Sti- something will stick. <laughs> good, good. Well, while you do that, I'll do this. <laughs> Uh, so what's going on, Devin? What are we doing this week? What are we doing this week? I, well, I honestly, I want to. I'm a little upset about Beauty and the Beast. I'll be straight with you. Oh, that like, I didn't see over. it. Yet. You didn't see Beauty and the Beast. I'm not mad at you for not seeing it. Um, oh, honestly, okay. I kind of understand why you didn't see it because I didn't want to see it. I, I will be the number one guy to say I didn't want to go see Beauty and the Beast. Really? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Come on. See I will me. say. Well, no, I will say that I didn't see it because I don't want to. Um, I've just I've been saying to everybody that that the marketing team on this one, I felt like this movie came out months ago. So like, <laughs> I already feel like I missed the the zeitgeist on it. So I'm kind of okay waiting a, a little bit to to get in on it. You know, can I, can so I, I didn't you, rush out to see it. Can I tell you the true story about this well, movie? Yeah, it, okay. it, it actually came out 26 years ago. Well, yeah, that, okay. <laughs> that, that's that's what you're feeling because it's the same movie, Seijin. Like, it's the same movie. So we should um, point out that, like, this is not the first Disney live-action redo. You know, they did Cinderella, Jungle Book. Right. But I will say that as somebody that loved Jungle Book, anybody that listened to our Oscar episode knows what how I feel about that. Um, <laughs> like, Jungle Book was distinctly different from the movie. Yes. and uh, that's, It definitely and, had its moments where it was similar, but it was very much its own thing. Yeah, well, yeah. well, let me tell you why, why I started seeing these Disney remakes Anyway, like the the whole reason it started is because Maleficent came out and mm-hmm. I saw the Maleficent trailers and I'm like, no, I don't think I'm going to go see Maleficent. And then the day that Maleficent came out in theaters, I, I happened to see Doug Benson at a comedy club in Providence. And then afterwards, you know, they have a smoke circle outside. So we're passing it and we're puffing. Rory Scovel was there with him. And Rory Scovel and I get to talking just about life. And I'm like, so like, be honest, Maleficent wasn't any good. And he's like, oh, my God, dude, you got to see it. So on Rory Scovel's recommendation, the next time I had an opportunity, I went and I saw Maleficent, and I friggin' loved it. And okay. I'm just like, oh man, I've been missing out. Like I thought that all these like live action Disney remakes were like bullshit, but like if Maleficent can be this good, I gotta check them all out. <laughs> yeah, I um, I, Maleficent was was decent for what it is. I did not enjoy it nearly as much as it seems like you did. Oh, I saw Maleficent three times in the theater. Oh, season. Man. I'm yeah, that's... no, no, no. <laughs> it wasn't until it really wasn't until Jungle Book where it hit me where I was like, all right, like I I I can get behind this idea because even Cinderella was was good and well done, but it just Cinderella is not one of my Disney movies. I guess maybe that's where the problem was. Where it's like Jungle Book was really close to me, but here's the deal: Beauty and the Beast is my jam. So yeah, right. Beauty and the so... Beast is Beauty and the Beast is both of our jams. I mean. We both did it. We've both done the stage production, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we have we have some connection to this one. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so when I saw it, I'm like, oh, I really don't want to see this again. I don't want to see how they changed it um, because I was a little nervous. Because like Forever Maleficent, they do have a Cinderella, and as good as Cinderella is, because it did distinguish itself f- from the original, right? Yeah. It still is. You know, it still didn't hit me the way that Maleficent did, or like Jungle Book did. I mean, oh, right. Peach Dragon was another like stumble. Oh man, I the completely Peach forgot Dragon, about it. Yeah, yeah, a very forgettable film. Yeah. yeah. And ugh, just ugh, leave it. I, you thinking about it now, I'm just like, oh, that was that wasn't even a swing and a miss. That was yeah. that was three swings, three misses. It was it was worse than just swing and a miss in one time. I, I if I could, I wish I were a better word person right now, but. Beauty and the Beast comes along, and I might be talking like Alice in Wonderland, like the Alice in Wonderland with Johnny Depp. Those are great movies. I'm going to be the person those, who says that. Well, right, and the important thing to remember about those is that those are very much a weird thing because they're technically sequels to the originals and stuff like that. Like, when, in in Alice in Wonderland, it's not her first time in Wonderland. Remember? Right, but that's like, like a maybe. big reveal near the end. Like, right. it's like they, they kept that a secret really very nicely. Well, except and, that weirdly, everybody seems to know her, right, up until the end when they reveal that, that she had been there before and all that sort of stuff. And she had just forgotten about it, right? Wasn't that right. a deal or something? Nonsense? But it's right. cool. But then, like, it's Whereas, also just, like, it's Wonderland, right? It's, I'm supposed to feel a lot, a little out of place. And yeah, then that reveal yeah, yeah. happens, and you're like, 
this is cool. Like, this is very cool. And then, yeah. like, even um, through the looking glass, Time, Sasha Baron Cohen is one of my favorite actors anyway, but his performance as Time in that movie is incredible. <laughs> That movie is underrated and unfortunate that it's now marred by fucking Johnny Depp turning out to be the world's biggest dick. But yeah, um, but it is up on Netflix and people should check that out. If the, uh, yeah, I would, I'd recommend all of them. So then, but like the the big distinction with all of the movies that we just talked about, right, is that yeah. they've they differed greatly yeah. from well, what came effort. before. They made an effort to do something new and with it. The big issue that I have with Beauty and the Beast is every time it feels like we're going to drift off of the animated one, we're going to do something new, we've introduced something for you to like get excited about, huge course correction happens Like back to, no, 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 it's time for Gaston. No, 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 it's not time for Gaston. I want to hear more about that. Like That was interesting. Why do you yeah. take away the fun from me? Yeah, yeah. And that's not fun. Like I, I should be engaged with the movie. I shouldn't feel like the movie is working against my enjoyment. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess for me, I, I, I was kind of, I wanted that. So I'm actually really happy to hear this. I mean, it's, it doesn't change my opinion about how I feel like I've seen this movie before, so I don't need to see it immediately. But when I do finally see it, I kind of just want it to be that. Well, I'm very excited then to see it. But, okay, so here's the thing, Sejin. I guess if those little, like, breadcrumb trails of interesting difference to this film didn't exist i wouldn't be upset because yeah, those were distractions they hinted, they like it's something like, more that that you just never got yeah the, 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 i thought there was something there that wasn't there before <laughs> nice <laughs> i was proud of that oh boo. real brother oh shut up are you oh, wait, were you saying boo words um <laughs> yeah boo words <laughs> But yeah, so it's it's a movie that like I am very excited for when you see it. But I will say, I'm upset that they made 170 million dollars on it because ah. like it was it was such a a piece of nostalgia. It was so remember this. It was member berries of the movie Dis, uh, Beauty and the Beast edition. Yeah, yeah. And that bothered me, especially because like I ran out, and the weekend that Beauty and the Beast premiered in IMAX, I was there. Like you're already making the money re-releasing Beauty and the Beast. Why did you have to do it with real people? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I yeah. The thing that I'm worried about from this perspective is that this is just going to set them up to just this is all they're going to do now, right? Oh is no, they're, they're... I honestly, I based on the critical response, I feel like they've already course corrected. And, yeah, you, can, and, you, and think, you can disagree with that. I think the, I think the money, uh, I mean, maybe. Maybe I'm not giving Disney enough credit on this, but I think the money's going to make them make at least a few more that are just these, like, straight from, like, animation to live action ones, you know? What are, what are some of the next ones that they're talking about? Well, the, re the only reason I say this is I don't know what you've been, like, social media or news-wise, but the big news that broke this weekend on the heels of Beauty and the Beast is that the Mulan remake is not going to be a musical. All the songs are going to be cut out of it. Oh. And that is why I feel like they saw that, like, oh, we're making money hand over fist, but critically, this movie is taking a hit. Because so, almost every review was, uh, why did I need to see this? When there already exists a shorter, perfect version in animated form, why should I go out and see this live action film? Yeah. Um, so I wonder then, like, is it just a matter of, like, how else do you do Beauty and the Beast? You know what I mean? Like, Beauty and the Beast without the music is not Disney's Beauty and the Beast. It's it's an entirely different animal. Whereas like Mulan, I don't know. Like I feel like I can. First of all, I don't know. Remember much of the music from Mulan? Well, there's only three, four songs in Mulan. Yeah, I was gonna say like gonna three, so, three. Okay, so then I guess I remember most of the music from Mulan because yeah, I was gonna say I only you, remember three or four. What songs. what are the four songs? Come on, Siege. I think you got this. Uh, so there's well, there's Be a Man, right? Yep. Um, uh, honor Which, to us oh, all. Congratulations, because "Be a Man" is the proper title of that, and everybody is calling it "I'll Make a Man Out of You." But what oh, about no, "I'll Make a Man Out of You"? The name of that song is "Be a Man." So, yeah, "Be a Man." Um, honor to us all, yep. right? Uh, and then doesn't Mushu have a song? Or Mushu does not have a song. You no, made that up in your head. You just making that up. You're thinking about um. My girl likes to party all the time, party all the I time, don't, party don't all the time. Now, but okay. That's an Eddie Murphy song. That's like oh, Eddie that's Murphy's. <laughs> and Eddie oh, Murphy played God. Mushu. Yeah. That no, was good. No. That was a good deep cut for like our fans who lived through the 80s. Oh, my God. No, man. A anything. Was that before or after No Sex in the Champagne Room with Chris Rock? Oh, that was like... way before. That was yeah, in the 80s. Been... No Sex in the Champagne yeah. Room was 1999. So, like. Yes. 
No, you're, you've lost me then if it's before that. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, so you got two songs. Could you think of the other two? Um, now I can't. No, now that we've been talking about Eddie Murphy for the last two seconds. No. All right, so A Girl Worth Fighting For and, oh, right. yeah, yeah. and Reflection, the, the song that she sings about into the looking in the water yeah yeah <laughs> so, like, um yeah so so like that's exactly my point though yeah so it's, it's like, not Mulan, like music is not integral to the story or, or of of disney's mulan right exactly same as i would like i could make an argument that music they tried to make it real integral in disney's hercules but it it's such a distraction to me like oh, yeah. like if they yeah. they could do it like fun and sort of like little shop of horrors y where like they're not actual muses, like they're just a Greek chorus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just I following think, him around. Yeah, that I think that could be very fun. Um, and 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 keep the songs there. But I also don't think that like Meg's song would survive as beautiful a piece of animation and work that is. We've already gushed over it on this show. Yeah. But I don't think that it makes the transition to live action. And yeah. The yeah. other interesting thing about Beauty and the Beast is, and I'm sorry that I derailed this whole thing. You haven't even seen the goddamn movie yet, but. We have both worked on stage productions of it, so not only have we do we love the original movie, we've seen it brought to life before in live action, right? Yeah. Like the thrill of seeing it in live action is kind of gone if you've already seen that once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's fair, man. But like, I love this story so much that it and your and nostalgia is the word. Like, it's, it's just gonna it's, it's gonna is... completely run on nostalgia for me, and <sighs> that's it, and that's and that is okay with me. All I will say is, and this and this is all I'm going to say. This is the last thing I'm going to say. But I'm not going to really do any spoilers or anything like that. I'm going to allow you to make your own decision or anything like that. If you do want to hear my opinions, get me at Devin D. Decker on Twitter because I'd love to discuss this movie. Anybody who wants to discuss Beauty and the Beast, I'm, I'm right there with you. I want to talk about it. But here's what I'll say. Okay. At the beginning of the movie, I said to myself... I'm going to go into this with an open mind. I'm going to give this the respect that it deserves, and I'm going to treat this like it's a new experience. And minute one, second one, I was disappointed. And it was just so difficult to come back from the very first frame of the film punching me in the face. Like, I could never trust it again. Mm. Do you... um? Do you feel like it's well made? Is just your question is just why would why did it have to be? Oh no, Te- technically it's got problems all across the board. Like right. it's a well, musical oh. and the sound mix is not very good. Oh shit! But I've already that said more. I've already the... said more than I should have. But yeah, no. You you ask is it just? No, it's not a ver- it's not a well made movie at all. Like but you this bring seems up to be the trend right now is like La La Land. We had that issue too, where it felt like some of the technical stuff sound wise was 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 off. So I don't know. There was yeah, a we... moment where I'm like, Emma Watson was almost La La Land. Like, that <laughs> was almost her in La La Land. <laughs> and I said that as we were driving home. My mom goes, eh, she would have sounded this good. And I'm like, oh, mom. Because <laughs> as much as I don't like La La Land, my mother hates it about three times more. <laughs> so I don't know. But that's and that's it. And that's the thing. I mean, like, even from a technical standpoint, you talk about Jungle Book. We talk about Jungle Book. We freaking loved Jungle Book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are wolves in both stories. There are wolves okay. in Jungle Book and there are wolves in Beauty and the Beast. They're kind yeah. of a plot device. Yeah. The wolves in Beauty and the Beast do not look near as good as the wolves in Jungle Book. Well, that's disappointing. And it's like, well, but it's both Disney, right? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to take a look at it because, you know, there's always weird stuff with like different styles, like what they were going for when they do this type of animation and stuff. But you're right. Like they've done this right once. Like the, let's not get it wrong. The that's, next I time, mean, because that's right? the thing is that like you talk about Jungle Book was amazing. Jungle Book yeah. was an amazing film. We've already yeah. gushed about it. I I, I, I want to gush more because well, I'll, I'll, I'll feed. I'll fill that in after. And it's like but this is it's basically the same thing. Right. It's it's, yeah. it's basically a human actor and a bunch of CGI. Yeah. So so how I don't know how they dropped the ball the way that I feel they dropped the ball. And again, this is all just my opinion. Yeah, we'll I'll, we'll have to give it a watch and we'll have to definitely talk about it and get yeah. into it some more. Sorry, 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 sorry. But here's what I'll say. Here's the reason why Jungle Book has reaffirmed it. Every time, because after seeing that movie, you're going to have Beauty and the Beast song stuck in your head. On Friday, every time a Beauty and the Beast song came in my head, I listened to a song from the Jungle Book remake <laughs> and was just instantly happy. <laughs> so. Nice. Excellent. Yes. So, so, oh, so sorry. Man, so that's, that that's creepy, really uh, the creepy song that they actually cut because it was too scary. And then they went and they threw it in the credits anyway. Scarlett Johansson as uh, what's her name? As Ka. As Ka. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. 
Like yeah, I understand that's... why they cut it, but then I loved that it stayed as a credit as a credit yeah. piece. Yeah, man, that oh, song is which even that disturbing. speaks to something about beauty. My weekend has literally been Beauty and the Beast. Let me be honest with you, because it was St. Patrick's Day, right? So I have other things that happened over the weekend. But mm-hmm. Dale and I went to a party on Saturday night that was joint St. Patrick's Day, um, like house cooling. Like, what do you call a going away from a house? Like a moving party? Like, what, is there a term <laughs> for that? A going away party is normally what you call. But it. they're not, not really, really going away. The they're they're moving. They're they're moving to like the next town over. Yeah, well, and I said like going away, and people were like, "Oh, well, they're going." You like, call that Mom? an awesome excuse for a party, is what yeah, you call it was, that. Yeah, well, and it was, dude. There was a live band. There was a DJ. Like it was a friggin' rager. If y'all someone... are moving two blocks, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great friggin' party, and Dale and I both got caught in conversation with this girl about Beauty and the Beast. Luckily, I was able to get away after twenty minutes. Dale lost an hour and a half of the party talking to this girl because she's like, yeah, I really didn't like Beauty and the Beast. And then this girl just went ballistic and then on she her? she just like went like off on her, like, well, you need to da 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 And I'm like, oh, Dale, you, you poor bastard. <laughs> and, like, and then she like came over and she's like, well, I missed out on what was going out outside on the deck, and I'm pretty upset about that, and they're out of beer. <laughs> See, man, that's, that's why I don't express opinions in public. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. You're, <laughs> but that's why that's, that's why, why you do it on a podcast. podcast. Yeah, this is why we need this podcast. Oh, also, also, also final, 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 and then you can, I swear you can have the microphone. Uh, shout out to Cody. Remember Cody from oh. that, that party we went to around Christmas time? Okay. Well, yes. he, he was working that night I saw Beauty and the Beast, and he was oh, all like, he's a very go. nice man. He's telling all the coworkers, he's such a nice man. He bought me a drink once. <laughs> well, he, he, yeah, so, we know he's listening because we told him to. So, we told hey, him man. to. I didn't have a, I didn't have a card on me. I was so upset. So next time I see him, Cody, you're gonna have a card. You're gonna hear this, and here's your shout out, buddy. I'm glad that Excellent. I was able to touch your life in a George Bailey esque way. Oh God, that oh, was all yours, Sage. <laughs> Thanks. I um, I did not have nearly as like. Uh, defining of a week as you did apparently <laughs> i don't know man i like i've really just been spending um a lot of time lately i've been p- catching up on some video gaming um That's which good. That's i've been fun. trying to well i've been trying to find a good multiplayer game to play with some friends out this way um overwatch came out and like i just i cannot get myself into it i i keep trying and like i do okay but i can't get past certain tiers and all this shit so like that's been really disappointing Wait, for me do you own overwatch I do own Overwatch. For which system? PS4. Why are we not playing Overwatch all the freaking time, Seijin? <laughs> we can play some Overwatch sometime. Maybe maybe with a good team behind me, I'll feel oh, a little dude, bit better. Dude, you got me, game. you got Dale. Yeah. You'll, you'll like actually have a team. Yeah, well, You'll the be thing able to kinda, get the support. Well, the thing that's kind of driving home this, like, this need for support thing is uh, Ghost Recon just came out. Tom Clancy's uh, Wildlands Ghost Recon nonsense extended title, add more names. Oh, Zelda um, Breath of the Wild with guns. <laughs> Yeah. Is that what it's being called? Because I, man, this is not fun. This game is just not fun. <laughs> like it's so. Um, anybody that played Far Cry Four or Three, um, and anybody that played The Division, you imagine like an amalgamation of those two games, which is a great reductive way of talking about games. But like, but like, <laughs> there's. There's this whole element to it where it's this huge map, a lot like Far Cry, where there's just stuff on it and you don't really get told necessarily exactly what to do next. It's kind of just like drive along and if you run into something, you run into something. But unlike in Far Cry where like all of that feels real, uh, like like meaningful and, and well thought out and things kind of weirdly connect to each other in a way that you feel OK varying off the path to, to, to take care of like small stuff because it, you know that when you finally get back on the path, that small stuff would have helped you in some way. In this, it just feels like the small stuff's just getting in the way of me wanting to do anything, right? In, in Ghost Recon, I get into a car to drive somewhere, and first of all, everything is like two kilometers away. Nothing is right next door. Everything <laughs> is forever away. So it's another 10 minutes in a car where I have to listen to these dude bro assholes who are on my quote unquote squad who just keep talking about how great America is while we're in the middle of like Bolivia shooting Latin American people. Like, it's well, crazy. It's, to it's... be fair, though, America's pretty great. Right, oh, dude, guy? <laughs> 
Yeah, man. I, I, at first I was laughing because I was like, this is a joke, right? Like it was a, imagine if you saw the A-team, but everybody on the A-team was just Mr. T. Like that's what my, <laughs> that's what your team is, right? But then imagine that it's Mr. T without all of the like be kind to strangers thing. So it's just a bunch of assholes who like are these big dudes with mohawks that just run into a place with guns, shoot everybody. And then they're like, all right, now let's figure out what happened here. And it's like, well, what happened here is you killed everyone, man. Like, oh, we it's, massacred it's, innocents. Right. But the other problem is, is that you get a mission, right, to go like you have to break into this house to go find a piece of intel. OK, well, you sneak up on the house and you're like just about to break into the house when all of a sudden just out of nowhere behind you, 10 army trucks have just shown up because they just felt like going to the specific spot today. It's not mission specific. They just happen to be on the map and you just happen to be sneaking and they saw you. So you're screwed. And it's supposed to be this like simple, easy mission that's supposed to be getting you along in the story. And I can't do it now because the game save state has these 10 army trucks sitting there every time it reloads me they're still there <laughs> i have to be honest though that right there is the best example of government waste regarding military that i can think of why do you have 10 trucks all together <laughs> So that's the secret, I think, about this game. I think we're all going to find out that this entire game is actually satirical in about a year. Like, they're going to start talking about how, well, yeah, I mean, we made everybody these big, ugly American dudes. You can't get anything done because of every other government coming in and shooting you up. Your solution is to basically just kill everybody, right? Like, they're just going to they're gonna come out in a few years and just be like, yeah, we, we meant this all as a big joke. Like, gotcha. Well, like, because your character, your hero, the guy that you embody, like, says racist things to people. <laughs> And you're just like, whoa, I don't want, why am I playing this guy? Can I at least have the option to be silent? How about that? But like, no, you have to like, you like walk up on, on crowds of like civilians and you're just like, get out of the way, meet. It's like, okay. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. yeah. So no go on Ghost Recon. Is, is this so, multiplayer? Yes. And the whole point of the game is that you have a squad of four and you're really supposed to play with three of your friends and really like take on the world that way. And then what happens is when you take on the world that way, all three of your dudes get replaced by just other people. So you don't actually hear probably much of like the dude bro stuff anymore because those guys, those squad guys are gone. So if I was playing it with three other people, it might be tolerable to play, but it still wouldn't be fun. Right. Do we have two other friends? That's the question I have like right now, because like I feel like I want to do this with you. Like this is something I want to experience with you. I would uh, if we could find a few people to play with us, that would that would be great if we could find one or two people that are willing to play with us, because I am just having no fun on my own. And, I, and I've tried it with random people. And sometimes random people on the Internet are, are They're probably great worse with. than the dude, bro, guys. About a majority of them are, are worse than the dude bro guys when it comes to yelling crap in my ear. I don't really want to hear. Um, yeah. So like that's kind of been driving home this whole thing where like there just has not been since the PS4 came out since the there is since the Xbox one came out. There has not been one multiplayer game that has really worked for me. Destiny promised to be that. And we could talk about my thoughts on Destiny sometime like, and how disappointed I've been in that entire game. Well, the, no, no time but the present, buddy. Let's talk about your <laughs> thoughts on Destiny right now. Let's not leave a dangling participle. I'm very interested. Destiny is one of those. Destiny as a game as it stands today with like all of the DLC and all of the extra stuff to it has been a really fun experience. And I've killed a lot of time. I think I've got well over 60 or 70 hours played in that game. And that's for somebody that doesn't really focus on much. I don't I don't care to go through it myself. I only ever play it with friends, that sort of stuff. I, I'm one of those people that leaves it for months at a time and then an expansion comes out and then I'll come back for a few weeks. Um, that's the, that's about the extent of my interaction with Destiny. But that's because I bought Destiny the day it came out. And I actually have the Destiny PS4 and everything. Like, I bought into the whole Destiny hype when it first came out. And when you put that game in day one and there was about 10 hours worth of story content to do and then that was it, then it was like, hey, you can multiplayer if you want. And I was like, well, OK, that's that's great. So then I jumped into multiplayer and everybody was already amazing at multiplayer and I was fucking horrible. Like, that's the experience I had with Destiny, which is like the same experience I have with like Call of Duty games and stuff like that. So I was like, this isn't anything new, guys. I still feel like the asshole in the room. <laughs> right. And then I, I kept playing because I had a group of friends that wanted me to really kind of get into it. And just everything was, well, pay more, 10 more dollars to get this pack. Then we'll, we'll add on this one later. Oh, and then also, here's this other planet you finally wanted. Here's a $30 upgrade. So by the time I spent about $180 on that game, I was finally playing the game I wanted to be playing when I spent 60 And The I worst been, part of all is that like right okay now, I could pay $20 and get everything. Yep. 
And the worst part of it was, was that on the same day that I was spending my $180, somebody was only spending their $60 and getting everything that I had been paying. Oh. And they never made good on anything that they promised me for the first $120 that I put into that game. You know what I mean? I and do. Like I know exactly what you mean. I don't know. There's a weird part of me that's like early adopter and all that sort of stuff. But this is the first time you've ever had to consider that sort of mentality with video games. You know what I mean? Like there just there wasn't enough game to begin with. The game that was there wasn't great. Then they finally started correcting stuff. And that's awesome. But like I wanted the game as it stands now. That's the game that I wanted three years ago, you know. And so yeah, it, Des- it, it, it's Destiny as a oh. product overall is like this amazing thing. And I'm so excited for Destiny 2 and I'm excited to see what they continue to do. And I love Bungie and all of that stuff. But my personal experience with Destiny has been so much disappointment all along the way that I just can't get over that sometimes, you know? I get that. It's it's um it's like a reminder every time you turn it on. Mm-hmm. It's uh, I I understand that. Talked about this with Nintendo and the whole like having to rebuy games so that you've bought eight times before, right? Right, and like, I'm and I'm playing and I'm playing that same game right now where like I'm wondering if I'm going to actually buy the DLC for Breath of the Wild, and like right now I am firmly in the no camp. I'm okay. firmly okay. like no, I'm not going to do it because like the game itself as much as much fun as I'm having playing Breath of the Wild, and really I had a big a break moment because I fought like a boss. And I was like, that was awesome. That was inspired game design. Bring on more of that. And if I have to yeah. go through the stuff that I have issues with to get to more of that, that was worth it. And okay. that just happened. I just stumbled into that. And it was and it was it defined the game for me. The first boss fight. And I know that there are at least four more like that. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully they didn't blow their wad in the first game, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, um, they've they made a lot of changes to the structure of games. I'll be surprised if they stick to everything that they changed. But, yeah. 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 Yeah, but what are you going to do? But then, like, also, all the Amiibos have, like, DLC attached to them. Mm-hmm. Like, where, like, I can get the clothes from Ocarina of Time if I buy a $12 Link Ocarina of Time Amiibo. And I'm just like... <sighs> This this is the stuff that used to just be in the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I mean like this is an old argument. Like ever since it they've is, introduced it's a DLC. Very old argument. But but it's new for Nintendo, right? Like they finally have started to buy into this DLC conversation and they've always said the reason they didn't want to do DLC was exactly this reason. Was so that they didn't have fans that felt like this, right? But there's a way to do DLC because we do see other people do this that doesn't have to do with this weird cosmetic nonsense that like spend $12 on an amiibo which doesn't do anything in the game except change your clothes. Like no, that's not and that's not the DLC we wanted them to do. Maybe it changes your clothes. Maybe. Maybe right. you're just going to get some fire arrows or maybe you'll get one piece of clothing. Right. And like, <laughs> I don't know, some of the best DLC that, that I've seen uh, ever, I always go back to Borderlands. I think Borderlands did a really good job. Whole new areas with whole new stories and mission structures. They upped levels. Everything like that was perfect. And new guns and new outfits and stuff like that. All wrapped up in one package. 20 bucks. There you go. And it was like straightforward, simple, to the point, And I knew that I was getting cosmetic stuff but i knew that i was also getting a lot of game content along with it right it's this like little nickel and dime stuff that kind of really comes from phone games that's what kills me like i can't that's not the kind of dlc we, i wanted nintendo to be focused on you know i don't want my games on my console to be like phone games either yeah. like i haven't played let it die but i have a friend who's playing let it die and he's like yeah you have like four times that you can die each day and unless you want to pay more money for more chances to play the game yep. and i'm like no No, stay away from me. I'm not downloading that. I don't care how good the game is. That doesn't interest me. Yeah, I'm, this is the one thing I'll allow myself to be like an old man gamer on, I guess, is like, like, no, I don't want to go to these different like pay structures with this sort of like let it die is a perfect example of that. Right. Like, I don't want those kinds of structures. I don't get people who play play. Candy Crush. I don't understand it. Mm. Like, just flat out don't get it. I, I'm just being, and I, yeah, great, yeah. I'm being the old man right now, and I'm sitting on my porch, and I'm yelling at the younger generation. Well, you know, you gotta understand one thing, Devin. And this is this is one thing that businesses all over the world understand. You need to do something while you're sitting on the toilet. That's <laughs> that's who plays Candy Crush. You need you need oh, something while you're while you're sitting on the john. You know that you if need... I have my cell phone in my hand, I have probably the whole internet there. I yeah, can find but, something to do that's not Candy gotta, Crush. But, 
<laughs> but like that works for you, like pulling up a newspaper or whatever you got to do that works for you. But some people, they need a little bit more uh, stimulation and it's all about toilet stimulation. All right. Wow. Well, there's the title of the episode right there. Jesus, <laughs> we just stumbled into it. Jeez, no, you're right. Gosh, gosh, <laughs> gosh. I, 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 I always fail to consider the bathroom. <laughs> you see? And that's the problem. That is the problem. You know what's done that to you? Pop culture. You like in movies and stuff, people don't go to the bathroom. People TV don't shows, go to, people don't that's go to why the I love Seinfeld. I love Seinfeld because they go to the bathroom. All said, the time. As a child, I can vividly remember a seven-year-old Devin Decker in first grade sitting with my mom like, it really bothers me. Like, when do they go to the bathroom? <laughs> we watch when? these people's whole lives. When do they go to the bathroom? And then, like, also, like, the Ninja Turtles, I'm like, when do they? They're naked. When are they going to the bathroom? Are they just going to the bathroom as they go through the sewer? I mean, they're already in sewers, right? Like, like, like are they just, like... <laughs> I, do we not talk about it? Like, <laughs> like, like you really like as a child. Like, I'm just like, like I understand that the Ninja Turtles are naked. Like, I'm not a fool. I get that they're naked, and it's like, it's like if they have to go to the bathroom, they they just go, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to think about that with all animal worlds, right? Like, just, I, mean, I do not <laughs> no, want to be a janitor no, we... in the world of Mickey Mouse, right? Like, I mean, half of them they don't wear, wear clothes. pants. Though, Half they, of them don't wear pants, though. Oh, yeah. Donald Duck is just pooping wherever he wants. But, yeah, like, there's... Goofy has to use a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> He's not Pluto. <laughs> Pluto gets to go wherever he wants. But Goofy uses a damn toilet. Oh, my God. Scrooge McDuck's house probably smells awful. <laughs> awful? None of them wear pants, Seijin. Have you ever been to a farm? There you go. That's probably what it smells like in Duckville so... or whatever it is. <laughs> Duckburg. Duckburg. Thank you. I knew it was duck something. I oh, oh, you think everything's duck? <laughs> oh, that's why I like Darkwing Duck. I'll be honest. Saint Canard was clever. Duckburg, little under nose. <laughs> oh man, oh, dude! Why? What the fuck are we talking about? What? <laughs> <laughs> You've been looking for a multi. I, here's the thing, you watching you play video games uh, when I visited you in Ohio the first mm -hmm. time was like, oh my god, people are using these to play online. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I could be playing online with Seijin. Yeah, I could yeah. be talking to Seijin all the time playing video games. Yeah. Why am I not doing this? And then like I I bought. I bought. I'm an idiot because I did not know. I bought Fallout Four, expecting that to be a feature of it, and it wasn't. Oh no! And I just all. did not like Fallout Four. And you know, I understand that that's like I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect from it. Right, right, right. But right. I knew that everyone I knew was getting the game, so I thought, oh, okay, I'll get to have like online experiences with people. And then no, that's. That's not how that game works. Yeah. For anybody that thinks that I'm being like overly crotchety about like online games, like you have, to, there are two different types of online games that I like styles that I will get into, and that is the one that is like super dependent on your team being tight and working together. So like the divisions are a really good example of that. Like <laughs> to say what you will about the rest of the game, the multiplayer aspects of that game are so well thought out. Like you have to coordinate all your special abilities, you have to coordinate exactly who's going to move when, where, and all that if you really want to get through some of the late le late game stuff um in in the division you need to be able to work as a team period right or the other side of that is like a grand theft auto or far cry or just cause style online component where you just wreak havoc you're just destroying things and it's and it's not there's no there's no limits or no punishment like have you ever done some online grand theft auto it I, is I haven't played grand theft auto since vice city Oh, to be completely on, honest with you. One of my favorite things to do in a Grand Theft Auto game online session is to jump into a helicopter, see how high I can get it, jump out and see where it crashes, you know, and that sort of stuff. And then, like, you start sparring with each other in the air on helicopters, like you jousting and you play like chicken and whoever jumps out last. And, you know, that sort of sort of crazy stuff like anything in which I could just go nuts. Far Cry is really good for that, too, where, like, you team up and you just start going after everything wildlife uh army dudes you just start going nuts and you go out with just a couple of rpgs and just take out heroin fields right like it's crazy like i any, I, any I have game not gotten to any of that in far cry i uh, love far cry 4 i i love far cry 4 it's the reason i bought a xbox one 
I'm going to be mm-hmm. honest with you because I played it and I'm like, oh, wow, maybe I just don't like this type of game because the PS4 controller isn't really great for it. Like, say what you want about Xbox and it's, it's pretty much an inferior system. I owned both of them and I sold that to get a second PS4. But that controller feels good. It feels like you're shooting a gun. Like, it feels like a trigger. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the, the way the sticks are, like, it makes sense, like, aiming the gun. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I'm nuts. <laughs> but um, no, man. There, there was, there was something to be said for the Xbox One in, in its time. <laughs> Listen to me talk about it in the past tense. Oh my god! Um, someone was, I was talking to someone. Who was like, oh yeah, if you have Rare Replay, you get to, you get to play the Battletoads arcade game. But why would you have Rare Replay? That would mean you own an Xbox One. And I'm like. <laughs> Yeah, it's you're the right. sad thing about that that collection is as much as I would love to buy that collection, I have no interest in ever owning an Xbox One at this point. Like I was giving it time to see if they were gonna, you know, fix it up and make it more interesting to me, but I've never No, like, yeah, it, I, it I, is no There's never been anything that's come out where I've been like, I guess it's time. That's just never happened. The best part about Xbox One is it gives people on TV shows a video game system to play. Because Microsoft <laughs> is willing to give you some promotional support if yeah, the Breaking people Bad are playing lot, Xbox. You better believe Jesse would be playing an Xbox One in some episode, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure he is on Better Call Saul, right? Like, I, I don't know. Go. I don't watch that. But Anybody that does is just shaking their heads right now. because. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, the one I'm talking about is um, American Housewife. Have you watched any American Housewife? No. Oh, CJ, you got to start watching American Housewife. I am not kidding. American Housewife is so freaking good. First of all, I love Katie Mixon, I'll say that. But then Diedrich Bader, a.k.a. Harvey Oswald Lee yeah. from the Drew Carey Show, is the husband. And that should okay. be enough right there. The show is super good. The pilot episode is not very strong. But as the show has gone on, it's all about building a world and continuity. I, I think the closest show I could relate it to is My Name is Earl. Where, okay. like, just because you meet a character doesn't mean you're only going to meet them that one time. But they're also not going to make a huge deal about it the way that How I Met Your Mother did. Right, right, right. Like, because, you know, How I Met Your Mother was, like, a big thing about building continuity, too. But it would be, like, a five-minute, like, here's a recap on who this character is in case you've never watched our show before. Or the person that we got to play this character that you were only seeing for five seconds of this episode is an actor that we wouldn't pay for just five seconds. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. You'll see them again because they're played by a B-list actor. Oh, okay. Oh, Britney Spears like showed up for one minute in that episode? I bet we're going to see Britney Spears again, right? We're going to see Britney yeah. Spears again. But, <laughs> I mean, like, and I don't, I, yeah, I don't recognize any of the people who are doing that, but, like, the continuity in that show is brilliant. I just, I love American Housewife. It's probably, and this is something we should do as the TV season ends, but it's definitely in contention for one of my top three new favorite shows okay. of this of this television season. Ooh, that's we could something. totally do. Let's totally yeah, do can, that. Yeah, we could totally do a wrap-up at the end of the season and see see which ones we liked and uh, and didn't. Um, yeah, man. But, yes, but so, so I'm looking for a new multiplayer game that on the PS4 that it can just kind of get me through the next couple of months. Is there something coming out in the next couple of months that you're looking forward to, or just? Uh, no, it's just in a in a few months I've got to put on my big boy pants and, and start figuring out what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. Get oh, a job. okay, gotcha. So, so the thing is, is that at some point video games are going to still be a thing in my life, but I just need to make sure that that they're not I the have... only thing in your life. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. exactly. But I also until then... need to eat. Food. Right, but until then, I need me a video game. To oh well, if you own Overwatch and you do own Overwatch, I do own Overwatch. Let's yep. let's get on Overwatch because seriously, <laughs> I think together that that could really become a game that you enjoy. Okay, because I'm behind that. Yeah, and Dale is always on my ass to play Overwatch, and she loves playing games with you. So that that should be our goal, right there. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, man. So I've got. I've got something for you, Devin. What do you got for me? I've got some questions for you here. Oh, um, what? In fact, they're kind of in the form of a quiz. <laughs> oh, shit. We got a quiz? I, uh, well, you and I talked today about, well, what can we talk about? And I said, well, you know what I like? I like me some food. And then you you mentioned that you liked food once on the show. <laughs> so I thought, <laughs> is it possible? Is it possible that me and Devin are food soulmates? <laughs> Oh, let's... so I went out and said there must be a quiz you for that, and I asshole. found and I found almost instantly 
what is your food soulmate? So we and I are going to take this like test together, and we're going to see if we line up on on this superfood stuff. That sounds uh, like that sounds like a <laughs> terrible idea. Hope you guys enjoyed what is going to probably be the last episode of the Say Report. I love this idea. I love this Hold idea on, too. I'm going to set something special up here so that we can do this proper. <laughs> um, all right. So, question number one on on this. Oh man, question number one is on any given day, what does your Instagram feed look like? A mix of everything Instagram has to offer. Foodie accounts, man buns, whatever else is trending, fitspo, <laughs> clean eating, or lots of muscles. Uh, okay, hold on. I don't know how to do this. Betches and Kardashians. You're being totally honest. I don't know what a betch is. <laughs> I, I think it's a bitch. I think it's then, the word bitch, but like, and the oh, my option. betch has. <laughs> and then the last option is lots of puppies. Now, here's a problem. I don't, I don't really have, have an Instagram, Instagram feed. <laughs> Oh my god, we're Instagram soulmates. So so why don't we both put a lot of puppies? <laughs> that that seems fine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Next question. Question number two. What is your go-to drunk food? All right. And your options are pizza, beautiful pizza. Uh something sweet, particularly a warm chocolate chip cookie, uh chips and guac. I avoid drunchies at all costs. I hate that word. Anyway, what the fuck is drunchies? <laughs> what do you think it is? I've got drunk the munchies. munchies. But I'm it's not a portmanteau of two. Yeah. Fuck those people. Whoever came up with the word drunchies, I'm coming to find you. Why is it not just munchies? Isn't munchies just supposed to be it's something that's munchies. altered by chemicals and it made me want food? I'm hungry munchies. and I shouldn't be. Okay. Hashtag anything, munchies. And the last option is anything and everything. If I see it, I want it. So if I'm drunk, my go-to, uh, my go-to is probably. On this list, pizza, I think. Yeah. Yeah, on that of that list, yeah, because I go with like a fast food something. Like if I'm drunk, I want something greasy and delicious, oh and none God. of those other things really fit it. I ever tell you about the pizza club I went to when I was <laughs> I was really dr- drunk in uh, Philadelphia? I feel like there's no such thing as a pizza club. Oh, oh, you walked no, into no, no, a no, house no, no. that had like okay, two pizzas. Okay. This is the greatest place in Philly. So if anybody can ever find Pizza Club, I don't know what the actual name of it is, but it is an amazing place. Oh, God. Um, and and give them all your patronage. But there is this place in Philadelphia, and it was like three o'clock in the morning, and I was standing outside of a conference, and very drunk. I've been sitting around with a bunch of older scholars trying really hard to fit in, so I'd been drinking a lot, and I was just like, man, I'm starving. And this girl that was at the conference with me, who's from the area, goes, well, there's probably like one place that's probably open is pizza okay with you and i was like yes of course pizza's fine so she walks me down like three blocks you know that not far away at all and she takes me into this place where the front half of the building and it's like it's longer than it is wide the front (laughs) half of the building is a pizza place right it's just a straight up pizza place dudes are making pizza putting it out in the window you can buy it by the slice um was it like real big slices i feel like it's it's on south street It's, it's, it's it's two uh it's two um it's two blocks up from jim's steak sandwiches (laughs) <laughs> Which is the best steak sandwich in Philadelphia? The back half, the back <laughs> half is just a nightclub, just going crazy, full of people. There is a bouncer at the end of the pizza part, letting people in or out of the club part, and he's he looks like Carl Drago's younger brother, right? Like he's just up there and he's just staring <laughs> down anybody that looks like they don't have an ID on them. But I kid you not, the music that they were playing was just this, like, crazy dubstep beat, and it was just going, pizza, 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 pizza. It was, that's it. And I was in that place for 20 minutes. And it was, like, it was insane. It was, like, a strong bad sketch. It was, like, dur, 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 pizza, pizza, pizza. It was crazy. That's, and I was just, like, this, this place is amazing. It was nuts. Um, so, anyway, so that's Pizza <sighs> Club. Uh, sorry. So, go-to drunk food is definitely So, I guess, pizza. yeah, pizza. Of, of those, because, like, chips and guac, No. Uh, no, what, no, 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 and like anything and everything, no. Because when I'm drunk, I try, I try not to eat. <laughs> tell me about, um, tell me about your ideal toast. My ideal <laughs> toast is it peanut butter and jelly. Is it toast with butter? Is it avocado topped with goat cheese and crushed red pepper? <laughs> Whole grain or Nutella? Uh, is buttered? Is buttered? Butter. Just butter oh. toast. I gotta say, peanut butter and jelly is more my speed, but butter is okay. It's okay, CG. I bet like it all collaborates together. <laughs> <laughs> Your afternoon schedule magically clears up. What are you gonna do? Spend hours watching Netflix, catch up on social media, hit the gym for some cardio intervals followed by an intense lifting routine, nap time, or online shopping? 
I'm going to hit the gym for some intense card. I can't even say it. I can't. Um, what was the first one? Spending hours watching Netflix. Mm, is it like there was a DVR thing maybe? Uh, that's, I mean, that's probably your DVR option. Yeah, so that's it. Like, if I end up having a little extra time, I'll probably do that okay. more than anything um, else. I am a nap man myself, through and through. Oh, well, the nap is scheduled. The, oh, like, no. Like, here's yeah. the problem. Here's the problem. Like, if I wind up with a, if a with an open afternoon, it's because, like, I can't sleep. <laughs> so, um, you know how every quiz inevitably has that question that sticks out all of these stupid uh what are they called buzz buzzfeed quizzes i'll have that one question that's so different than the rest that you're like oh this is the one that the whole answer is dependent on yeah um here's the final question on on the food uh soul maze excellent test. which tv show matches your personality <laughs> oh okay house of cards friends orange is the new black modern family or sex in the city <sighs> that's difficult I feel like you're a carry. No? Is oh, that don't don't do that. You know what is weird? I the problem is that Sex in the City isn't on anywhere. That's the big problem with Sex in the City. Cause of those, like right there, three of them are right off the table. And that is House of Cards, Oranges and New Black, and Sex in the City. And that's just because I can't randomly tune into them at any given moment. Okay, okay. I, like, right now, I could probably be watching Friends or Modern Family. But I, I don't think that that's necessarily the spirit of the question, I'll say. It's just supposed to be which one is most like you. Like, it doesn't matter. Oh, the one that's most it. like me? Yeah, which one matches Pro- your personality? Probably that's House of Cards, because that guy's fucking crazy. And he talks to the camera like there's someone there. And I talk to the camera oh, like no. there's someone there. I was going to say, that that's not you. But now you've made a really compelling argument. You do kind of plot and scheme and talk to people as if there's a camera there. Yeah, dude. Like, seriously. And I've only seen one episode of House of Cards, and I think it was because I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Am I Kevin Spacey? <laughs> Plus, you did throw Kate Mara in front of a train. Oh, yeah, um, that was the best day ever. It was an accident, and she was I fine. Think, but... I don't know. I think you're a friends person. I'm yeah, no, like, of that, I would probably say friends, like, honestly. But that's what I was saying is that, like, it friends would 100%. Like, I was a friends devotee, and I'm, yeah, like, think... still kind of against Modern Family. But the fact that I can watch either of those shows, like, pff, all about it. I'll, I'll say friends for me as well, because I, I think. Because like, you want to be food all... soulmates? Well, no, I just feel that we're very similar in that way. All oh, right, yeah, we're I definitely submitted... Joey and Chandler right here, right? Oh, that makes Will Ross. <laughs> I'm I fucking have... Ross. <laughs> nice. Tell the story, brother. He's definitely our Chandler. No, I'm trying to hit submit, but it's not approving of my submitting. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> that's a real problem. Oh, wait, nope, I've oh. got it. I've got it. You are, and we both are, chia seeds. This what? is our, this is the soulmate. This is we are we are food soulmates. First of all, because we both got the same answer. Congratulations. Our, our like, like if you were gonna say like our year of the tiger, we are, we are chia seeds. That is what we fall under. Uh, <laughs> what side of the zodiac are you? Chia seeds. Um, <laughs> you like things that make you happy comforting things and that's why you need chia seeds their claim to fame is their high content of omega-3 fatty acids which makes them filling but decently low on calories this doesn't sound like us at all if you're seeking comfort food you have chia pudding or sprinkle them in, in your smoothie over your avocado toast which we distinctly did not say we wanted i need to be completely fucking honest with you season this is a goddamn cult you need to exit right now they're coming to get you you need to run i bet you didn't even put on the tinfoil hat because you thought oh it's just a buzz free squid it'll be fine you're gonna Throw get them but no, 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 get no, no, no. I just I gave them our social security numbers. They sent me these quizzes. Everything's fine. Everything is not fine. <laughs> Throw chia seeds on anything. You won't be disappointed. Yeah, we're we're in a chia seed cult now. <laughs> I've already uh, been in a chia seed cult. And then I look over and the camera pans and it's just all chia pets. But like in all seriousness, like what would you consider to be like your soul food? Like what what is that thing uh, that like for you was just comforting, homey, like uh, well, okay, so I love a good burger. <laughs> I'll be honest okay. with you, but I also I really like tacos. <laughs> All right, and uh, but like I feel like that's just like that's not true. Like home for me, like if I eat it, I'm instantly transparented back home is beef stew. 
Okay. Yeah. Be like like something like pretty you, classic. You've had my mother's beef stew. Well, like, yeah. You, you know the one I was actually going to point out that I remember the most about your place, and this is just because as like an outsider who just got invited over for special events was a uh, pumpkin uh, pumpkin soup every Halloween at your place. That is correct, and that, that is actually that's... just beef stew out of a pumpkin season. Is it? Yeah, no, there's definitely pumpkin in it because there's it's like no pumpkin in it. Like, oh my god, you're blowing my mind! It's right just now. that it comes out of a pumpkin, so your mind made it taste like pumpkins. It's the beef stew, man. It's just <laughs> the beef stew. Oh my god, I was convinced, convinced that there was some pumpkin in it as well. That's no, amazing. No, it's just. But, but there that's, you go. That's cool. That like f- food soulmates, because what you think of is that. Chia seeds for life. <laughs> Chia man. seeds for life. Yeah, man. Jesus for me, Christ. it's it's peppers and and uh, it's sausage and peppers. Like uh, there's certain types of sausages, very specifically in my family's heritage. Being Portuguese, we use different things like chorizo and stuff like that. But or chorizo is a is kind of the equivalent of that out here in the Midwest. Um, and so like. Uh, <laughs> So that sort of thing is really kind of my big comfort food. And I was really feeling that this week. So I've actually got like a crock pot full of it waiting for me right now. <laughs> that's <laughs> exciting. Like, that's very here, exciting. I'm sitting here recording with you and, I've, and, and that's all I've been smelling for the last hour is this delicious like uh, chorizo and peppers that's been waiting uh, for me. You know what, dude? Like, let's wrap it up. You should get to eat that chorizo and peppers. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I'm upset for you that you can't eat chorizo and peppers because I'm just we're, we're just talking about toilet stimulation and chia well, seed brethren and... And, like, I don't get a lot of, like, home-cooked stuff lately. You know, that's one of the sucky things about it being in your mid-20s and being out in, in college or just trying to get on your feet, right, is you spend a lot of your time eating, like, either Chef Boyardee or takeout. And so, like, every now and then when I can fit in, like, a really good home-cooked meal, it's really important to me. So, like, I don't know what it was. This morning I woke up and I was like, I know what I want tonight, and it's going to take some time and it's going to take some prep, but I want it. So I, like, spent three hours today putting a list together, going out shopping, getting everything, everything prepped and thrown in the crock pot, and then, like, I had a, I then realized I had actually finished two early because if i had started the crock pot then i would have been eating dinner at like three o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> nice nice gotta, gotta be careful but, you, but you have to have your nap right well, well, otherwise right, you're gonna be my <laughs> so i was like well that's my nap time <laughs> i nap from two to five um <laughs> my life is hard <laughs> no so the like, real I, world I, is I would... gonna eat you up Sejan. I was just real happy that I was able to just do some good home cooking today. So that's kind of what got me in the mood to talk about food. No, and that's awesome. Like, what, what are we gonna do? You know tonight? what I, I did? Like... You know what I did? Uh, currently, I am uh, my parents are they're they're away right now, uh, mm. so I ate leftover pizza from last night. Nice. And here's what I'm doing now. Here's here's the Devin Decker. All right. So I said like I like tacos, right? But here's mm. the freaking problem: you can't get tacos from Taco Bell until after 11 a.m. Oh no! And I want a taco in the morning. I like a taco breakfast. So what I do now, I go and I buy the grande meal, 10 soft tacos. It's only nine ninety, right? Okay. And I save them. And then in the morning, <laughs> I go. take out between two and four tacos, and I warm them up. And then I got breakfast tacos. Breakfast tacos. You need I, a jack-in-the-box. That's what you need. I, yeah, I need, yeah but there's, there's no jack-in-the-box in Rhode Island. You know this. Yeah. There aren't even in Ohio, are they? No, no, no. I think the only time I've ever had an actual jack-in-the-box was uh, Jersey, probably. Oh, geez. I don't think they're even in Jersey anymore. I feel like they moved out. Where did we go? Where we had Jack in the Box once? Somewhere along the line, I've had it. I like down like down south, they start propagating a little bit. Like uh, your Tennessee, your Florida, Kentucky. Georgia, Kentucky, maybe. Maybe that's where I've had it then, going down that way. But yeah, there's there's plenty of them. And it's. Ugh. If you're in Kentucky, let us know if you got a Jack in the Box, because now I want Jack in the Box. I got to tell you, the one thing that ab- upset me most of all about not visiting you is that there is all right, so this is just an insane story every time i've gone over to ohio or pittsburgh because it's like semi-similar area coming mm-hmm. back th- i i would pass this exit and what you and you're forced to get off the highway to get over onto a different route and yep. at that exit where you do this where you're forced to do this there is a white castle so every <laughs> time i have been coming home from your neck of the woods, I do this, and I'm like, "Yeah, I could eat, right?" I nobody else, eat. nobody else knows what a terrible way this story is going to end. But anyway, <laughs> well, no, well, Sejan, because of all the times we went to White Castle when we were in college, mm-hmm. um, and it's just, it's just the worst food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it and destroys. It's not agree with, it's destroys not agree with your body anytime. Oh my went. god, that's another story for another day, ladies and gentlemen. But. I, I have th- determined what to order at White Castle so that doesn't happen. It's oh. the chicken ring sliders, and it's basically okay. like a flat 
McNugget of chicken with a piece of their cheese on it. And I'll get Delicious. like between four and 12 of those. Yeah. And then like I'll have White Castle for the rest of the ride home. So I was trying to figure out where this White Castle is because it feels like such an oasis point. Like, <laughs> like I couldn't, I couldn't identify it. And I obsessed over it for like three days trying to figure out. And then eventually I did. I like tracked along Google Maps to like find stuff in the area. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to go. Like, I almost drove out to there on my own on the day of the Oscars. (laughs) But I'm like, I'm not driving four hours for White Castle (laughs) when there's a White Castle two and a half hours away. Uh, Yeah, that White Castle, man. That's the one that doesn't get you violently ill. You got to go to that one. Yeah, this is my Oasis White Castle. So, like, someday I'm going to have to go back. And I know that I'm going to have to go back. And I'm just telling you, oh, I'm sorry. It just, I think of it and it's... It's like the weirdest location. I, I, I don't know. And I'm how... not like a huge fast food guy. Like, like I'll eat it. Anybody knows that I will eat it no problem. But, like, it's just not my preferred thing. I'd always prefer to have a home-cooked meal. Oh, of course. But if I have to get fast food, I don't know, man. I don't think that there's any one that is, like, my go-to, really. They all kind of just kind of hit me wrong. <laughs> Right, and that's good. Congratulations. That's that's how you should feel. It shouldn't be like, oh, if I'm getting fast food, I gotta go to Burger King because if I don't go to Burger King, I'm gonna shit my brains out. <laughs> like that's not that's no th- no lesser of evils. Like it's all pretty yeah. much evil. Like yeah, the yeah. beauty of the taco building is like you know, it's 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 rel- they're relatively the most healthy of the fast foods. Like yeah, you can go to taco, which is real weird, but it's like real ingredients and stuff, and like it's, I think like. The meal that I get at Taco Bell, I think, is 600 calories. And I'm like... Which is not amazing, by the way, but... <laughs> no, but it's filling. And it's well, like... Right. But, like, the and same... And compared to the guaranteed 1,400 calories you're going to get anywhere, anywhere else, Anywhere else, right? right? Like, that's yeah. the thing. Like, yeah, 600 calories is not great, but it's better than... Yeah, a, a McDonald's cheeseburger is 500. <laughs> and who's just eating a cheeseburger from McDonald's? It's right. 490. I'll just be honest with you. But... <laughs> Well, fuck, man! I'm gonna get me a cheeseburger. There you go, right? I'll fill you up. Forget those. Uh, that throw out that sausage and pepper. She got smelling in the background. <laughs> oh man! <sighs> All right. Um. So yeah, that, that that was fun. This was good. I'm gonna let you go eat. But I was, I'm also gonna make a promise to our listening public. Uh, next episode, we're not gonna talk about video games at all. <laughs> Okay. I feel like we went like real deep dive on video games. Yeah, yeah. Which is why I'm also going to use this time to say that I am competing in a Legend of Zelda randomized tournament that begins on the 27th of March. So uh, if you're on Twitch, it's Fox Zero, or you, I'm going to be posting stuff to the the Say Report stuff, so that if you want to see me play Zelda, you can do that. Also, I am taking place in an arcade pit tournament with Zach Dyer from Board with Friends. And that starts on the 26th of March. So so um, I just want to say to our faithful listeners, um, you are um, that's a, you can mark that this is one of the lies that Devin's going to tell you for next week that he's going to have to apologize for. No, no. Why would I have to lie <laughs> that you're going to do both of these things? There's no way we're not going to talk about this next. Oh, week. no, 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 no. I, I honestly I don't feel like the the Legend of Zelda thing is going to start after we've 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 recorded. So I won't okay. have that. And, like, the chances of in this 32-team competition that Zach and I are going to be competing on the very first day, because it's only two matches per Sunday. Okay. So I feel like I can actually make good on this one. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll but see. we'll see, Tune right? Like, it's something to, see to look Devin forward to. to apologize again. <sighs> you said, ugh. <laughs> I, I feel like I should just preemptively apologize. You're probably right about that. But uh, we'll find out next week. So take it away, William. Thank you for listening to the Say Report with your host Devin Decker and Stephen Serwick. Please follow the guys on Twitter and Facebook by searching for The Say Report. And you can always subscribe on your podcast channel so this is delivered straight to you and you can enjoy it every week. With apologies to your mother, we'll see you next time.